This morning on Wake Up With Hope, Ronnie Mills will be with us and we're going to have a moving devotional. Plus, Jeremy Dixon from the Good Food Kitchen will be sharing a delightfully unique recipe. You don't want to miss it. Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. It's the start of the weekend, and we are excited to be starting the weekend with you. Have you had a good week? Send us a message on our official Hope Channel Facebook page and let us know if Wake Up With Hope has made a difference in your week. Well, we are absolutely delighted to share the hope of Jesus with you this morning. That's right. In today's program, we're going to feature life-changing news from Ronnie Mills. We also have the renowned Jeremy Dixon with the lunch or dinner recipe for tonight. And of course, we also have a devotional that is sure to get your weekend started on the right foot. But first, we have this day in history. On this day in history, after winning access to the Baltic Sea through his victories in the Great Northern War, Tsar Peter I founded the city of St. Petersburg as the new Russian capital on this day in the year 1703. A new city. Did you know that Jesus is preparing a place for us in a magnificent new city? It's true. In John 14, verses 2 and 3, Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Friends, Jesus is preparing a wonderful place for us in heaven. Can you imagine this amazing place? You know, oftentimes we think of heaven as some boring place where we're going to play harps for all eternity. But friends, the Bible paints a different picture. Yes, it does. And here are just a few facts of what heaven will be like according to the Bible. In Isaiah, it says every animal will be tame. No creature, wolves, lions, bears, any dangerous thing you can think of will prey upon others and little children will lead them. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. We will build houses and live in them. We will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. We will long enjoy the work of our hands. We will get to visit with loved ones, ancestors, and even Bible characters. And we will travel and explore without ever getting tired. Amen. There's so much more that we're going to be able to do in heaven. Plus, God himself will live with us and there shall be no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears of sadness. Can you imagine it, friends? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says that even our wildest imaginations can picture how amazing heaven will be like. It says, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Jesus is preparing a place for his faithful followers. I can't wait to be there, friends. How about you? I cannot wait. I can't wait for heaven. We also want to highlight that today marks the anniversary of the opening of the Golden Gate Bridge. On this date, 75 years ago, that amazing, stunning, and artistic landmark made history after it finally opened after five long years of construction. It continues to be a monumental landmark even today. Have you heard of the recent jackfruit craze? <laughs> jackfruit is the largest tree-borne fruit in the world, weighing up to 40 pounds or more. Thankfully, grocery store sells it in chunks and portion sizes. Jackfruit is full of nutrients, including vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. It's also low in calories and low in fat. It's no wonder that this fruit is the latest trendsetter. Wondering how you can try it out? Well, we've got just the thing you need. Chef Jeremy Dixon joins us to share an amazing jackfruit tacos recipe. Jackfruit tacos are my new yummiest quick Mexican meal to make at home. They're so quick 
and really amazing. I found them at a taco truck in America when I was there a few years ago and they're really easy to make. So I've got a recipe in my cookbook seven. So we'll rip into that now and show you how to make jackfruit tacos. The first ingredient is jackfruit. Drain the water out. So in there with a bit of oil. So we're gonna add some tomato paste. Uh, this will kind of give it a bit of a savory flavor. It won't actually taste tomatoey, but just gives it a bit more savory note. So I'll fry that in there. Good teaspoon of spunk paprika in there. Gonna add some garlic. So I'm gonna add one big clove, or I've got two kind of, two medium cloves here. We're also gonna throw in an onion. So it'll take around about five or six or seven minutes for that to start to cook, soften. So now we're gonna add some extra vegetables and prepare those. So we're gonna start off with some red cabbage. So we don't need a huge amount, but just, just some lovely, fresh, colorful vegetables. We're just gonna put it in a, in a bowl just to hold it there. Um, avocado always goes well with anything Mexican. Got some cherry tomatoes. They always add extra great color. So if, you, if your dish kind of looks like it's not really amazing, just think of another color to add to it, some contrasting color like red or green or purple. So the next thing we want to make is a wonderful dressing that we use across quite a few of the dishes at the Revive Cafe is this wonderful cashew and lime aioli. So we start off with some cashew nuts, put them in a blender. So a cup of those. We're gonna add four tablespoons of lime juice. So get some fresh limes. Gonna add a bit of garlic, not too much. I'm just gonna just cut it and put it in. Gonna add a tablespoon of maple syrup for some sweetness. Half a teaspoon of salt. Always use Himalayan salt where you can. And also add around about half a cup of water and then we're gonna blend it. As you can see, this dressing is lovely and smooth and thick and pourable. And you may have to adjust the water that you put in there, so you can add a bit more water if you want it pourable, but that's about right. The important thing is to note with the dressing, you want to make sure the cashews are properly blended. So you've got a nice, smooth, creamy texture. You don't want water and little bits of cashew nuts. So make sure you keep blending, or if you want to, just soak it for a little bit and then re-blend, and that can help it as well. So we've got the dressing done, and we're gonna add some, some tacos. I've got some, some white corn tortillas here, or tacos, and they come from the supermarket kind of quite dry. The best way to freshen these up is in a hot pan. So basically throw, throw some water on the, each side of the, the taco, and just put in a hot pan for about, probably about 10 or 20 seconds. It just gives them a bit more freshness, which is awesome. So what we do now with our jackfruit, we've got our tacos there, and then we want to add our, our vegetables, a couple of cherry tomatoes, Avocado, and of course we want to add some coriander. Drizzle over a little bit out of the dressing by maioli. Herbage. And there you have some amazing jackfruit tacos. How easy is that for a lovely, quick, delicious, plant-powered Mexican meal? Are you looking forward to trying this unique recipe? I know we are. Yes. <laughs> Send us a message on our official Hope Channel Facebook page and let us know how it turns out. I can't wait to try those jackfruit tacos. Mm. All right. You know, if you're enjoying our program today, don't forget to visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up and share us with your friends and loved ones. When we return, Ronnie Mills will be joining us to reveal exclusive Hope Channel updates. We learn a lot as we journey through life. Our teachers might be family, neighbors, or even colleagues, but it can be difficult to find a mentor who truly understands our heart, our dreams, our goals, someone who can help us overcome our deepest challenges. The Bible reveals that God wants to be your closest mentor, teacher, and friend. At Hope Channel, we can help you find freedom, healing, and hope in Jesus, and the wisdom in His Word, the Bible. 
We pray that the courses at Hope Da Study will help you find answers to your deepest questions. Let's walk together toward a deeper experience of wisdom and joy. Hi, everybody. I'm here with my friend Ashley, and we're talking about the Bible and Ashley, what is the Bible about? The Gospels. Yes, the Gospels are right there in the middle of the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John about the life of Jesus and His death and mm -hmm. resurrection. But did you know that the whole Bible can be summarized in just two words? Really? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, the two words are Jesus wins. Do you like those two words? I mean, the whole Bible is summarized in two words. So why don't we say it to everybody in the camera so that nobody forgets. One, two, three. Jesus wins! So during those dark days that you don't know what's happening, don't know what the future holds, don't forget what Ashley just taught you. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three. Jesus wins! Welcome back, my friends. This morning, we have Ronnie Mills from our very own Hope Channel here to share some special announcements with us. Good morning, Saints, and happy Friday. The past two years of a worldwide pandemic has really made everyone more conscious of their health and not to take life for granted. One of the most popular shows at Hope Channel is Go Healthy for Good. Therefore, I'm excited to have with us this morning the host of this inspiring TV series, Dr. Narita. Dr. Narita, welcome and good morning and welcome to Wake Up with Hope. Well, it's great to be here and thank you for having me. For anyone who's not familiar with this TV show, please explain what Go Healthy for Good is all about. Go Healthy for Good is a holistic show that does, we do a little bit of cooking so people can start making home cooked meals, some exercise to get them out of their uh, couches. We do a lot of education and we try to inspire them with other people's stories. So it's holistic health, trying to get people to change the way they live and to take charge of their health. Wow, what can viewers look forward to in this new season? Well, we have done a focus on the immune system, hypertension, diabetes, and then we've added in some other more broad topics, some rheumatic, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, stuttering in children, and one on marijuana, which I know the youth will be interested in. Is positive thinking and exercise important for good health? Oh, absolutely. Positive thinking reduces your risk of death by 30, 35%. It's just so powerful. Exercise for every hour you put in, you can get two hours of lifespan back. So all of these things are just so powerful. That positive thinking, you know, it's gonna reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, all the inflammatory diseases, and uh, it's, it's such a boost. It's improve your physical well-being, your mental well-being, your happiness score. Is there one testimonial from a particular viewer that has really inspired you regarding the impact of this TV series? Well, I was once doing a lecture series for Hope Channel and I was working in the same city at the time and trying to keep my, my license up. And a, one of the healthcare assistants came to me and she said, my dad has just had a heart attack. It's his last heart attack. And I said, what do you mean his last? They said, well, if he has another one, it's not his first, if he has another one, he's going to die. He's gray and ashen. His cardiac reserve is in the basement. He can barely walk. And I'm so worried about him. And I said, look, come to my lecture this evening. And uh, he did. I didn't see him there, but he came to that lecture. And she told me later, six months later when I went back, she said, I, I just want to thank you. I said, what are you thanking me for? And she said, do you remember my dad? And I said, oh yes, I do. She said, well, he came to your lecture. He started watching the show that you talked about that night. He made a lot of the changes that you're speaking of. 
and he walks every day. He walks half a mile to the grocery store, buys some groceries every day and walks back. That's how he does his shopping, a little bit every day. He looks great, his color is good, his cardiac reserve has improved. I just wanna thank you. Thanks again, Dr. Narada, for joining us today on Wake Up With Hope. And thank you for tuning in today. Your support is invaluable. We need you more than ever so that Go Healthy For Good can continue to be produced. Calling your donation today at 1-888-446-7388. Again, that's 1-888-446-7388. Or donate online at hopetv.org slash donate. That's hopetv.org slash donate. Thanks for your support. Thank you, Ronnie. Friends, don't go anywhere. We will have an inspiring message just for you right after the break. Have you ever wondered if there was more to life? Do you have big questions with hard to find answers? The Discover Bible Guides are Hope Channel's free gift to you. These 26 beautifully illustrated guides cover major themes of the Bible and answer some of life's deepest questions. Visit HopeBibleStudy.org or call 888-446-7388 and begin your journey to discovery today. Hi, Leo. How are you? Are you okay? Are you at home? Yeah. Of course you're at home. Everybody's at home these days. Dear VL, I can't even remember how long we've been staying at home now because of this virus. I just wish I could have other kids to play with. I love you. I haven't seen you for a long time. For now, <laughs> it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me. Are your hands clean? Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19, but it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose. <laughs> BL, can you teach me how to wash your hands? Your dad is a doctor. Washing our hands protects us but it also keeps us from spreading the virus in case we touch something dirty. Also, when the grown-ups see us wash our hands, they remember to wash their hands. So that's nice too. <laughs> and I know you have to rub your hands for 20 seconds, which is singing two happy birthdays. Happy birthday to you, you belong to the zoo. Speaking of birthdays, I just turned six. I wish you could have been here. My birthday was fun and all, but it's always nicer to have more friends here. That's my birthday wish, that we could all see each other again without being scared of the virus. Can we pray together, you first and then me? Joey. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for making us part of your weekend. It's now time for a devotional thought. Good morning. Once again, thank you for joining us as we wake up with hope. I'm Dr. Carlton Bird, Speaker Director Breath of Life Television Ministries, and I'm glad you're joining us today. We're gonna to share with you, but let's pray and let's talk to our God. Father, once again, great is your faithfulness to each and every one of us. 
another day where we can see your sunshine, another day where we can breathe your air, another day where we can praise your name. Bless us today and give us hope in Jesus' name. Amen. In our last episode, we talked about excellence and we read from Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. The King James Version says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the Lord and of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But remember, I also said I like the Good News translation. It says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember that the Lord will give you as a reward what he has kept for his people. For Christ is the real master you serve. You also remember that I shared with you a story, and it went something like this. There was a man who once visited a church under construction where he saw a sculpture making an image of Jesus. He noticed a similar image lying nearby, and so surprised, he asked the sculptor, do you need two statues of the same image? The sculptor, without looking up, said, no, we only need one, but the first one got damaged earlier. The man then examined the image and found no apparent damage, so he said to the sculptor, well, where's the damage? The sculptor, still busy, never looking up, said, there's a scratch on the nose of the image. The man then asked, well, where are you going to install the new image? The sculptor then said, I'm going to install it on a pillar 20 feet high in the air. Well, the man said, if the image is that far up in the air, who's going to know that there's a scratch on the nose anyway? The sculptor stopped his work, looked up at the gentleman and smiled and said, I will. The moral of the story is this. The desire to excel has nothing to do with whether someone else appreciates it or not. But excellence is a drive from the inside and not the outside. Excellence is not for someone else to notice. But excellence is for your own satisfaction. Now, our first point on achieving excellence, you will remember, was in the belief that we ought to know God's purpose for our lives. God has a plan for us. God has a purpose for us. And if we're going to achieve excellence, we have to operate in God's purpose for our lives. You will remember that's point number one, purpose. But now we move today to point number two, which is preparation. If you're going to achieve excellence, you have to prepare. You will never achieve what you're not prepared to handle. And every day you wake up, you have to realize that this day is filled with possibility. It's filled with potential. And procrastination is your enemy because procrastination wants to stifle your growth and keep you from obtaining excellence. But God has called us to be the head and not the tail. The world around us is moving and it's progressing. And as people of God, we must also move and progress. We can't be in the same place we were in 10 years ago, struggling with the same issues we had 10 years ago. Too many of us have motion, but we don't have any movement. But we must be prepared. We have to be lifelong learners. We have to further our education, and that's not just continuing education or professional development. That's good, but a part of education is experience, exposure, and enhancement. In other words, you can't sit back and let the world get educated, exposed, and enhanced, and think you don't have to better yourself. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people in my profession, in ministry, talk about they've been called. There's a calling on my life. But then they don't want to go to school. So I tell people all the time, just because you've been called to preach doesn't mean you don't have to study to preach. You still have to study. You still have to prepare. I tell them, you're not going to go and sit and go to a doctor who's talking about, I've been anointed. God's given me an anointing for heart surgery. Just lay down on the bed and the Spirit of God is going to tell me where to go. No, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that because you want to see a degree. You want to see some training. You want to see a diploma and a license on the wall. You're not going to even go to a dentist who's saying, the Spirit of God is upon me and the Spirit of God hath anointed me to go and to do this root canal. No, no, no. You have to have some training. You have to bring some integrity to what you're talking about. You have to continue learning. You have to be prepared. 
your value is increased based on your knowledge. I often hear young people when they talk about receiving low wages on a job they might be working on, they'll say, they don't pay me enough. But I tell them, you have no control over what they pay you because you refuse to increase your value. But when you increase your value, you make yourself a commodity where they need you. Your situation won't dictate to you, but you'll dictate your situation. Friends, we must prepare ourselves. We must prepare ourselves for not only the world to come, but we have to prepare ourselves for this world too, because it was Jesus who said, occupy till I come. Prepare. Don't wait for something to happen. Make it happen. Prepare. Number one, purpose. Number two, preparation. And these two steps are there to help us achieve excellence. Excellence can be achieved if you risk more than others think is safe, love more than others think is wise, dream more than others think is practical, and expect more than others think is possible. Know your purpose and prepare. Remember the words of Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Remember, the Lord will give you as a reward what he has kept for his people. Christ is the real master you serve. And friends of mine, in the end, I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to hearing him say, well done. May God bless you as today we pursue excellence. Thank you so much for that inspiring devotional thought. And thank you so much for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you'd like to learn more about us and our Hope Channel family, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. You can also share hope with your friends. Again, the website is hopetv.org slash wake up. And don't forget to join us here on Monday morning. We will start the week with Voice of Prophecy sharing a devotional message. We will also feature exclusive segments that you don't want to miss. We hope you start your new week right here. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought, please visit hope.study for your free Bible study guides. And before we say goodbye, we have a Bible promise, don't we, honey? Yes, we do. Where's it found today? Well, today, James 1, 5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Amen. My friends, we hope you have a wonderful and blessed weekend, praising God for his wondrous grace and mercy over us. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for today's encouragement. We needed this. Thank you for knowing exactly what our hearts need when we need it the most. And today, Lord, as we begin this day, we're going to take it to heart. We're going to believe your promises. We're going to stand on the firm foundation of your word. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.